When I was a kid, I remember the first time that I went into a church and saw a bunch of video cameras set up and realized that they were recording their service. I thought it was so cool. But nowadays, it's kind of an expectation to record your service or live stream. So let's talk about one of the main things you need to do that, which is cameras. How's it going everybody? My name's David. I'm the head video editor here at ReachRay. And when it comes to cameras, it's a little bit more complicated than just realizing there's a bunch of different brands. There's all sorts of features that can make different types of cameras what they are. And so the goal of today's video, I am going to give a couple recommendations on specific cameras, but really what we're trying to achieve today is figuring out what type of camera you need for your church service. So today we're gonna to be mainly looking at three different categories, which is camcorders, DSLR and mirrorless cameras, and PTZ cameras. I'm gonna slightly touch on some specialty and higher end cameras at the end, but we'll save that for later. Now, as we go through these categories, there's some things that you should keep in mind, and these are really only questions that you can answer. And so this is gonna help you really figure out what kind of camera you need, but these are gonna be things like, what does your auditorium look like? Is low light an issue? How is your audio visual team set up? Do you use a video switcher? Are you just gonna plug straight into a laptop? Are you just gonna record onto the cameras themselves and pull that video off later and edit it? What does that look like for you? All of that is really important to determine in order to figure out what kind of cameras to get that will best suit your setup. Also keep in mind, where are these cameras going to be set up? Do you have to buy a bunch of tripods? Do you need really long lenses that can zoom way in? These are all things that you really should consider. But that's everything that I wanted to talk about on the front end, so let's jump into our first category, which is camcorders. Now camcorders, as we all know, were kind of one of the first options that hit the consumer market and they were popular on home videos and vacations and stuff like that. So why would somebody want to use something like that on a church service? Well, for starters, they're going to be the most budget friendly. These are probably the cheapest out of all the cameras we're going to talk about today. So there's immediately a pro there. They're also extremely easy to use. A lot of times they just plug in and you don't have to worry about fumbling with a bunch of different battery types or anything like that. And so they're very easy. You kind of just set them up. Anybody can use them. And uh, really, I think ease of use is probably the biggest thing that they have going for them along with budget. But keep in mind with the pro of saving money, you're also going to sacrifice quality and features. Now camcorders have come a long way over the years. A lot of them can record straight onto SD cards. They have HDMI out so you can plug them straight into a video switcher if you want, but still they kind of lack in quality. They don't look the best. They don't have the best dynamic range, which basically means they lack detail in uh, dark and light areas of the image. And this is because they have a very small sensor compared to more expensive cameras. Again, we don't have time to go into the specific details of all of that, but just be aware that with the cheaper cost and the ease of use, you are going to kind of sacrifice on quality. But they're gonna get the job done, they're gonna record your church service, they're gonna help you get the word out and get your message in front of people, and so they're still a viable option. The camcorder that I would recommend is the Canon Vixia R800. The last time I really used a camcorder was back when I was a little kid and I would be on family vacations, and that's back when you had to mess with tapes and everything. So typically when I think camcorder, I kind of put it out of my mind and think, ah, they're not modern, they're not, they shouldn't be used for today. But the Canon Vixia actually is like a modern take on a camcorder. Like I said earlier, it can record straight onto SD cards, so you don't have to live stream. You can record straight to the camera if you want and use it for other applications, not just church service. And it can plug straight into a, a power outlet. You don't have to mess with batteries. And it has that HDMI out, so you can plug straight into a video switcher. It's a viable option. Now, another camera that I'm gonna throw into this category because of its ease of use is a category that we really didn't touch on. And it's kind of in the webcam category of all things, but don't let that fool you or think that it's a bad camera. This is kind of a newer option that's becoming really popular amongst streamers and church services alike. And that's because you can record with multiple cameras to the same video and get all sorts of different angles. And it's actually pretty easy to use. This is a three pack of cameras and it's called the Mevo Start Kit, I believe. It comes straight from Logitech, who is known for their ease of use and quality all in the same token. It runs on a very easy to use app, so you can set up all of your camera angles and run everything off of just this one app. And it can have different kind of microphones attached to it as well. You're not just stuck with the onboard mics if you don't want to. It connects to all of the cameras over Wi-Fi, or you can connect via ethernet. It really does give you a lot of flexibility 
and ease of use, and it's a great budget option. I believe you can get all three, that three pack for just under $1,000, but I'll put that on the screen just to be sure. Now again, the goal of today's video is to narrow the scope, so if you're interested in any of these cameras, please do not hesitate to look a little bit further and look these cameras up specifically to learn more about them. But with that being said, we're gonna move on to our next category, which is the DSLR and the mirrorless cameras. Now DSLR stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex, which you really don't have to remember right now but they're talked about in the same vein as mirrorless cameras because they really are quite comparable. When mirrorless cameras came out after DSLRs, they took a while to kind of catch up. People said that they weren't as good in quality. They were a little cheaper though, so that was the trade-off. And they're a lot lighter because like the name implies, it doesn't have a mirror in it. But nowadays DSLRs and mirrorless, they're so close in competition, it's hard to say which one is better. These types of cameras are extremely popular right now because they kind of are that first step up from an iPhone. So when you really wanna start upping your video game and get better quality, these are usually the types of cameras that people look at. These cameras can be used for live stream, obviously, that's why we're talking about them today. But the great thing is they can also be used for any other videos that your churches are doing. They also take great photos, so they're great to just kind of carry around and have with you, unlike something like a broadcast camera or a cinema grade camera. And with the rise of popularity over the years, there's an abundance of accessories you can pick from, and they pretty much are compatible with any kind of video setup I can think of. For this DSLR and mirrorless category, I'm gonna give you a couple recommendations as far as brand and model goes and keep something in mind. You kind of want to stick and commit to one specific brand. And this is because much like tools, once you buy one brand, buying accessories for it, like batteries or lenses or really any kind of accessory, it is easier when you have that one specific brand because it will be compatible with any of the other cameras you got if everything's in that same brand. Also, if you're getting a Canon camera and then for a second camera for a different angle, you get something like a Sony and then for your third camera, you get like a Panasonic, they're all gonna be slightly different in color. When you stay with the same brand and especially the same model for multiple cameras, matching something like color is extremely easy. That's not to say it's not impossible if they are different brands, you always have to work with what you have, but it just makes it way easier. If you're buying cameras for the first time, just try to stick within the same brand. That's my recommendation. Now, I would argue that Sony is leading the march on this specific category of camera. It just seems like people like the ease of use of Sony. Sony's really good in low light situations. It's known for its really quick autofocus, and most of their cameras are mirrorless, so they're very lightweight and easy to carry around. Their A6000 line is kind of their most popular line that's been out for a little bit now, but their A6400 is the one that I'm recommending today comes under just $1,000 for the body alone. Now, right behind Sony, I would argue the most popular brand is Canon for this type of camera. I think Canon was kind of arguably the better brand for a while with DSLRs, but then as mirrorless cameras got better and better and better, Sony kind of like took the charge as that, that new brand new toy kind of thing. Anyways, one of the things that Canon is known for is it's straight out of camera color. It's just absolutely phenomenal. It's autofocus is really good, not quite as fast as Sony's, but it's more precise, I would argue. I'm shooting on a Canon 90D right now. It's the camera I'm probably the most familiar with. And so it's gonna be the one I recommend for this category, at least for Canon. You can get it for about 16, 1700 with the kit lens already. If you already are looking for different kinds of lenses and you just want the body, just the camera body alone, you can get it right around that 1200 mark. Another popular brand for this category of camera is Panasonic. Uh, I'm gonna recommend the GH5 specifically. I don't know a ton about this camera. I've never worked with it personally, but I've seen tons of videos with it. I've considered purchasing it myself. So if you're looking at Panasonic and you're really invested in Panasonic as a brand, uh, this is the specific camera I would get. And lastly, I would call them kind of the black sheep out of all of these brands, but it's gonna be Blackmagic. Uh, they have a cinema camera line. The 4K is gonna be the one that I recommend specifically. When they first came out or when Blackmagic was first on the rise, they were kind of known as the cheaper option to all of these and kind of that that third party, that's the feel that they had, but they've really come a long way and they're a serious competitor now. And a lot of people like to use Blackmagic cameras, but with something like a Canon lens and just use an adapter or something like that. Blackmagic is a great option. I believe you can get the 4K for right around $1,400. So I do want to throw that in there if you're interested in Blackmagic because they are kind of this up and coming brand still that continues to rise in popularity and they shouldn't be slept on by any means. Again, before we move into the final category, I wanna stress the reason that these types of cameras, the ones we just talked about, the DSLR and the mirrorless line are so popular is because they can be used for so many different things. 
We shoot promo videos and different kinds of events for our church all the time. Sometimes we shoot church announcements and we'll do it with these types of cameras. They're very easy to just grab and quick shoot a video or set on a tripod. So they're very versatile. But one thing is, even though they can be used for live stream, a lot of them have limitations. For example, the Canon camera I'm shooting on right now can only stay on for 30 minutes at a time before it automatically shuts itself off. That's its max limit. So in our church, we have two of these cameras set up and we set a timer and kind of just barely stagger them. And when one is about to shut off, we'll switch to the different camera angle, shut it off, turn it back on, and then switch back to the camera that we just did that on and then shut it off, turn it back on for the other camera, and then we resume our live stream. So that is sort of a drawback for them, but their versatility makes up for it. This next category doesn't have that shut off limit, but they're not as easy to kind of just shoot whatever video you want. They're very much suited for specifically live streaming. That being said, these are the PTZ cameras, which stands for Pan Tilt Zoom. This is a very big feature that a lot of people want. If you're a solo media guy and you're the only camera guy on your church crew, a lot of people like this option because you can set a lot of these up and then you can get a accompanying joystick controller to specifically kind of pan, tilt, or zoom the camera all from this one station. So a lot of churches do like them for that. They have a very wide angle and they can zoom in a far ways as well. So they're kind of an all-in-one camera, um, but the affordable options aren't the best in low light. Again, they can't be used for just any video you want. They're not, you can't just like pick them up, you know, and start recording somewhere. They have to be hooked up. A lot of them have HDMI or SDI out, depending on how you're doing it. And so they're really much, they're very much suited for live stream specifically and having just a stationary tripod and not moving. PTZ Optics, that's gonna be the brand that I recommend for these types of cameras, uh, specifically the 30X SDI Gen 2, that's the model that I'm gonna be recommending for this, comes in right around $1,700. Um, this is very popular amongst churches because it does fit a lot of the audio visual budgets. It's kind of similarly priced to DSLR and mirrorless cameras. And a lot of churches really just want that kind of pan tilt zoom uh, capability and they're not shooting a ton of video outside of just their services, whether that be Sunday morning or whenever. So those are the three categories I really did wanna to touch on today. But if you are specifically looking for a live stream camera only, I would recommend looking at the Blackmagic Studio Camera 4K. This is an affordable studio camera. It's about $1,400. It has a built-in viewfinder already. It has a very large sensor, so low light's not a problem for it. It really is a good budget-friendly studio camera. But again, please keep in mind, the only reason I don't recommend that to many churches is because when you make a heavy investment in cameras like this and you're buying multiple ones, I think it's nice to have the versatility to have a camera that you can use for multiple things that you can easily pick up, record on its own, or just do different kinds of videos with, and it's not just for live streaming. But every church is different, so really only you can answer these questions, and I would encourage you to individually research any of these models that you're interested in. The only other category I really didn't touch on are like cinema grade cameras. These are extremely expensive cameras. They come with a variety of accessories that you almost need to purchase in order for them to run optimally. And uh, unless you're a mega church, something like Bethel or something, you're probably not gonna need a camera like that. But if you're interested in any of these cameras or more and you wanna look at more details, we do have a blog post that's partnered along with this video that you can find on our website, or I'm sure we'll put it in the video description as well. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Again, the goal today was to look at categories of camera to kind of narrow the scope so you could really start to pinpoint the types of cameras you wanna look at and do your research from there. But if you do have more questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to chat with you guys. And as always, consider subscribing because we like to make content that helps you guys out all the time. And I'll see you in the next one.